All right, um, let me go and get started here. Um, I'm going to add a couple things, you know, so as usual, I wanted to go over uh, the next assignment on trees, assignment 11. Um, although a couple of course notes for those people that are um, making use of these uh, sessions here. Uh, for one, um, I did post this just the other day, um, uh, opportunity for some extra credit, okay? So, um, if you participate in the study, it should only take you about 45 minutes or so. We're, we're trying to, to get some more subjects in this. And uh, for this class, I'll give up to um, a missing assignment, basically. So, you know, it's a pretty good uh, boost. Or if you've been doing the assignments, for example, it's, it's equivalent to like a letter grade boost over 10 of the assignments. So, so it would definitely be something if you can uh, to participate in that. So. I am required to give an alternative for this. So the alternative would be, um, um, I can make up another assignment. Uh, it'll be like, uh, it'll be a new assignment probably on graph data structures, something like that. And it'll have to be due by December 2nd. So um, so, so yeah, um, either one, but but uh, you should consider the, uh, the experiment and it should take you quite a bit less time to do that for the same amount of points. So. All right. So there's that. Uh, the other thing, um, I think that um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to um, remove this assignment 12 from next week and push that back to the week after the Thanksgiving. Um, and I might go ahead and make the assignment that I had on the standard template libraries also be extra credit. So, so a couple of extra credit opportunities for you here. Um, because yeah, uh, uh, if I push that out, uh, well, uh, check that. So, so uh, I'm not certain about that, um, but, but, but uh, I am going to not have an assignment next week nor a quiz next week. So I'm gonna push both of these back a week. All right, um, and, and we'll see about unit 13 here. Actually, I think we can still do that time-wise, but um, um, we'll see. So that's one note here, um, or that's a second note. So. Um, all right, so let's um, let's look at um, the trees assignment for this week. So as usual, um, oh, I haven't even started my um, my um, uh, vagrant uh, virtual machine yet. So. Uh, let me get everything going here. So as usual, I'm going to get up my dev box. Um, and while that's coming up, let's go ahead and get the assignment um, accepted, you know. So I, I mean, you know, I mean, at this point, I am a little bit dismayed for the five, six students who are regularly not even accepting the assignments. I mean, you can almost get like half the points if you accept the assignment and do the the the, the first task um that i usually start at least show getting started it, even even sometimes doing most all of the first task for these things so anyway um i mean a lot of people if you would just even put in that minimal uh, amount of work uh, would be in a lot better shape or would have been so so anyway, um, let, let's uh, accept the assignment here. So I'll, I'll get this. I'll accept this over in my Google Chrome here um, from our GitHub classroom. So assignment 11 is um, on binary trees, basically. So we're going to be doing going back and doing a lot of uh, recursion um, on this assignment. So hopefully everybody learned recursion well, because we're going to be coming back to that. So once I accept it, I should have a repository now for assignment 11. Um, and let's see if my dev box is up here. So it should be up. Let's see if I can access it. All right, so let me close off my old assignment, my previous assignment. Um, and um, yeah, as usual, you know, let's go through the 
the checklist. So this is there for you to remember all the steps you should do uh, every time before you're starting up um, an assignment. Um, kind of another person mode. I mean, I use checklists like this all the time in, in different contexts to remind me, you know, whenever I'm doing things uh, to make certain I'm doing all the steps um, um, uh, for work that I'm doing. So, so we've got our repository set up. Let's, let's clone the repository URL into our dev box. And as usual, I'm going to put that into my sync assignments directory. And I'll go ahead and open it up. Um, this assignment is going to have, you know, a similar um, structure like we've had before. There's a binary tree base class, um, and you're going to be doing your work in the L binary tree, I believe. And there's also a binary tree node uh, because we're going to be doing linked, not really linked lists, so, so trees, but using the same idea of nodes. Uh, but in this case, our node, um, I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, um, but our, our node um, actually has um, two pointers, a left and a right, so we can do a binary tree. So anyway, let, let me come back to that. Uh, let's, let's not skip our checklist here. So we clone it. We should configure the um, um, assignment repository directory. So we open up a terminal. run configure. Once we've done that, we should see that we've got a CLang format and we've got the um, .bs code directory um, and kind of maybe most importantly, um, our code formatting should be working, you know, so. So if I save, it should reformat um, all that for me, right? All right, um, and um, let's confirm everything builds and runs. So I do a Control Shift One to make clean, Control Shift Two to make all. And as usual, be patient. So there's a lot of files that need to be compiled here. Wait till you get your message about the terminal. Control Shift three to run our tests here. Okay, so everything's uh, cleanly building, um, and you know I had a couple of people skipping the the tasks here, so don't don't skip you know creating your tasks, um, so your issues. So I'll just create uh, issue one here to get started. We'll go to our pull request and um, add that issue to this pull request here. So, all right. So with that, we should be ready to go then as usual. So like I said, um, I mean, in this one, we're, we're looking at tree data structures. So tree data structures are another way to organize like a, a collection of items. So, so trees, um, as, as we talked about in our materials and our lecture videos this week, um, have a lot of advantages over um, a, a flat list, like a linked list or an array-based uh, list, right? So the big one is that um, uh, we can keep the items ordered and we can search them, right? So for our um, array or link list based list, if you, if you needed to search for a particular item, uh, that would be a, a big O of N operation. You have to basically search through the whole list unless you're keeping the list sorted, right? But if you're keeping the list sorted, then your insert um, is going to be um, a big O of N operation, right? So when we did our priority queues, um, our in queue became big O of N because we had to actually insert or shift the item. And, and in the worst case, we might have had to, to go through the whole list shifting all the items or swapping the items, depending on how you implement it, right? So in order to keep the, the, the lists, um, the priority queues um, um, in sorted order, we turned the in queue into the big O of N, right? So, so a binary tree allows us to do insertions and searches in log in time, 
which can be much, much faster than linear time and big O of n. So, so, so um, our insertion is log n, which is a little bit slower than insertion um, like at the front of or back of our queues or the, the top of a stack, right? Which is a constant time operation. But that means that our search can be log in as well, right? So, um, so I'll get you started with the insert, right? So all the functions that you're writing for this um, first couple of tasks um, are going to have the same uh, kind of um, um, format here. So we're going to write, uh, they're all going to be recursive functions, but the actual work is going to be done in a private function with the same name as the public function. So the private function basically is called by the public function. So all the, the public function is going to do is call the private one, giving the root of the tree to start, um, in this case, to start the insert from, right? Um, and then the actual work is going to be done in the, the private function, and this is going to be done recursively, right? So to insert, we have to, you know, if, if we're trying to insert a value, we, if the value is less than the value in our current node, we want to go to the left of the tree um, and, and find the location there to insert. And if the, the, the value is greater than that, you know, we want to go to the right. And, if, and when we come to a... Um, um, a node that's null, that, that's the location that we need to insert the value in, all right? Um, so let's look at the insert for task one here. So um, as usual, there is a, a, a base class, although we're not going to be implementing an array-based tree here. Um, it's not common to, to use arrays to implement trees, although it is common to use arrays for like a heap. Um, which is a kind of a, um, a tree-like structure. So our textbook, our um, data structures textbook talks a little bit about heaps. Uh, I don't think I had that as required reading, but um, if you're interested, you can look up the discussion about heaps on there. So let's, let's look at it. So um, to do task one, um, We're going to want to ins to implement the insert, right? So um, we can uncomment the insert. So, so the public version just takes a key and a value, right? So basically, um, um, why we're doing a key and a value maybe takes, uh, I should explain that a little bit as well. Um, we could have been doing that all along for all the lists that we've been doing. So, so this is this is typical that uh, we organize um, um, our collections as uh, it's, it's usually the, the the most general case is we have a collection just of like items like maybe a collection of employee records or something like that, and then then normally there's one thing that's unique about the items the values in our collection and, and that's the key. So think of like a database. So, so normally for a database, like, like we might insert um, an employee as like a row in our database, and each employee is going to have a unique identifier, and, and that's, that's how we index the, the values in our database, right? So this is, this is a common organization here. So, so, I mean, I still think of this as, as we're, we're keeping a collection in our tree of, of items. It's just that our, our, our values in the collections become a little bit more complicated, right? So, so we have like the generic value, but then we have the index or the key that we want to look it up by and that we want to insert it by, okay? So when we get to hash, we'll, we'll talk more about this for the next assignment that I just said we're going to do after next week after Thanksgiving. So we're going to kind of have, have kind of a week off for Thanksgiving here. Um, but but we'll, we'll justify this more when we talk about uh, hashing, like this key value concept that we're breaking things up again. But, but that means that um, now we, we templatize our binary tree. So notice, instead of templatizing just by the value, we, we templatize our binary tree by both a key and a value. 
um, and we pass in a key and, and a value in here. And that means also our nodes that we're going to be creating um, and maintaining in our trees have a key and a value um, as part of the node. All right. Um, so there's really only a public interface for a binary tree and, and their first three tasks are going to be implementing the insert, remove, and find, right? Um, but um, when you do the actual implementation, you have to have a public insert. So, so we're going to put, uh, you should uncomment this from the base class, the insert. Um, and then we're going to put um, this method um, as the, the public method that's called to insert a new key value pair, right? But at the same time, uh, actually, let me go ahead and let, let's go ahead and add that, make certain it compiles. But, uh, you know, um, at the same time, we're going to have a corresponding method that should be a private method. Um, and, and there's examples of this. So, so string and clear both do this. So you can see existing examples of, of, of how this is done. Okay. But, but let's go ahead and, and add the insert here. So the insert has this signature, it just takes a key, which is a constant reference, and a value, which is a constant reference as inputs. So um, we need to add that into our um, an in implementation, and I'll just make a stub function to make certain everything compiles still. So um, uh, into our L binary tree.cpp after the clear method is where I want to put my insert here. So, and there's my clear right here. Again, as I keep telling people, you know, don't leave documentation as um, an afterthought. So always do that when you're first creating your function, All right? So um, up here, we're inserting the key value pair into the tree. Going to insert the given key and, and value into the tree data structure. Uh, we maintain a binary tree, so we need to search for correct location to create and insert the new node for this key value to the tree. Okay. Um, and this is the public method for the tree insertion, okay? Um, the actual work and recursive search to insert the new key value node to the tree is done by the private insert method we call, we will call, right? All right. Um, and then, you know, kind of like this, uh, we have to fix up our signature here. So we have to indicate that this is um, a template member function um, that's templatized on two things, the key and the value. Um, and, you know, this is a member of the L binary tree. So notice the, L bi the full name of the L binary tree is key, L binary tree key value, because again, it's a template class um, on two parameters. So, oops. Just copy 
that. So insert here um, is a member of the albinary tree class, albinary tree key value class. Um, so oh, uh, get rid of the semicolon there. I think that should get rid of that warning there. Um, because of the semicolon, I thought that it was to, I was trying to do a function prototype instead of trying to actually do the actual implementation. All right, and since it's a void function, we don't have to do anything. All right. So that should compile, right? So we've got our documentation. Oh, um, I did forget some of my documentation. our parameters um, and then let's make certain everything still compiles. Now we've added the function prototype. All right. And then our tests are still ready. I didn't uncomment the, the test for task one yet. So um, all right. And uh, yeah, I'd actually had given that to you um, uh, in the function documentation as well, right? So uh, we also need um, a private method for insert. So notice though, so, so the public method uh, is a void method, doesn't return anything, but the private method is gonna re be returning uh, a pointer to a binary tree node, right? So let's go ahead and add that in. So that needs to be added, um, and you need to make you should add that into the, the, the private um, part of the L binary tree, right? So it should go down here. Okay. But that is the, the correct second signature. So uh, you know it takes the key and the value, but it also takes a pointer to a binary tree node. As input um, and it returns a binary tree node um, as its result. And, and we'll see why here uh, in a second. Um, so let's add that into um, our class as well. So there, there's a private version of the string and a private version of the clear. I'll put it after the private version of the clear, um, you know, again, I encourage you to maintain order here, right? So, so I try to maintain the order, the same order that we declare things in the header file. Um, so the order they should uh, occur in the source file here, right? Um, although I think I'm going to reuse my documentation that I just created uh, for the insert because it's mostly the same, except we added the parameter and we're returning the value now. So this is the private uh, actual implementation of the uh, tree insert method. Um, it uh, recursively searches the tree to find the correct location to insert the new key value node into uh, the tree, right? Um,
So we're going to be returning the node we are called with, or if we create a new node, we return the new uh, node we create as our result. Um, all right, so since I copied that from the, um, I'm supposed to return a pointer, so I'm just going to uh, stub this out to return a null pointer so I can see if it compiles and runs. But, um, um, oh, I did miss something, so, um, so I copied that from there, but in this case, uh, when we're doing the actual implementation, we do have to indicate that this is a um, template member function again. So this is also a template member function, even though it's private. So we need that still. Um, and uh, we do need to indicate that it is a, um, a member of the L binary tree as well. So as you can see, the I mean, you know, this is part of the, the cruftiness um, so, so, um, of, of C++. So, so we've got a really long kind of um, uh, function um, header here. In fact, the solo log is kind of scrolling off the end here, which I don't like. So um, Yeah, so our, our code style checker is just gonna prefers everything to be on the same line there. So um, anyway, so we'll leave that. Um, so if you put that in, I mean, again, it should compile and run. So everything compiles and runs, all right? And then, um, so I'll just give you the implementation of the public method. So the implementation of the public method is going to look pretty similar to what the, uh, for example, what the uh, uh, clear is doing. So, so notice, um, 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 all all's clear does is call the, the private method, but passes in the root of the tree, all right? So I should have mentioned um, that um, if you look at our L binary tree, uh, it has one private member variable, which is the root uh, of the, the tree. So, so that, that's the top of the tree that we, we're gonna always start searching from when we're doing our inserts and our finds and things. Um, and this should be initialized to null. So you know if you look at the constructor for the class, um, the only thing that the constructor does um, is set the root to null and assess the, the size of the tree to be zero um, as well. So yeah, I mean, like we've been doing for the previous classes, uh, we define size in the base class and you do have to maintain the size. So one thing we need to do in the insert is increase size by one. Um, I, I probably mentioned this in the, uh, the documentation. I mean, we could do that either in the private method or the public method. Um, so I Personally, I probably prefer to do that in the private method. So the, the, the place where we actually create the new binary tree node is probably the, the correct place to increment the size of the binary tree. Um, so anyway, since things are compiling and running, let's actually implement the, 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 the public uh, method here, right? So um, the, the public insert um, is a void function, so it doesn't have to return anything. Um, so I didn't really need that return statement there. Uh, but it, it, all insert does is it needs to call the private method. Now, the private method has the same name, but that, that's fine. So, so another thing I should mention about these is that this is an example of overloading uh, methods. We've, we talked about operator overloading and method overloading, right? So here we've got two member functions with the same name, but there's no confusion because they have different signatures. So in particular, you know, the, the private method takes an additional third parameter plus it returns a value instead of being a void function. So, um, so our public method can call the private method. All it's going to do is call the private method, giving it the root, and then also the key and value that we're trying to insert. Right. 
So people that are going to be using our L binary tree, they're always just going to be using the public method. They're just going to try to insert a key and a value. Uh, and then this method just um, doesn't do any actual work, but it starts the actual work by, uh, by calling the recursive insert uh, to start looking at the root of the tree to find the correct place to create the node and insert that key and value, right? So again, that should compile and run. So we're fine so far, but um, now we need to get the uh, actual insert working. It's not really doing anything, right? Um, so let me go ahead and uh, uncomment our tests. So, so you know, um, um, we should also be um, uncommenting the the, the test for task one in the the test L binary tree .cpp file. So let's actually uncomment these. Um, there are multiple tests for task one. So the first one um, inserts does some tests where we're inserting uh, integer keys and integer values. So notice here when we insert, we, we call it with a 10 and a 10 to insert a value of 10 with a key of 10. Um, and then the other tests do other things, like the other test inserts like uh, strings and doubles. So it's just testing that we're parameterized, right? So, um, yeah, and once you get the insert working, there's something to uncomment in the constructor, um, I believe, in, in some of the constructors. So that, that's why there, there's some other things for task zero, called task zero, that are commented out as well. So, so let's, let, let's just do it. The, the first uh, test here where we're testing integer keys and integer values, right? Um, so again, this should compile now because I've got um, an insert method. Um, so so it, it should be able to compile this, but, but I mean, our test will be failing. You know? So it should, after we insert a value, um, it should have a size of one um, and we should have that value 10 in our uh, tree. So right, our first family test is the line 57 here. The, the size is quite correct, all right? Um, so, um, we described the algorithm for the recursive insert uh, here, okay? So, so let, let's go through that, all right? So, so we're, we're now set up and we're ready to uh, implement the, the private insert, which is going to be recursive. Okay. So the base case is, is that if we pass in, uh, uh, if that node, the first parameter is, is null, is the null pointer, that means we've found the location in the tree where we need to um, insert the new node, okay? So, so the, the recursive call before that either went left or right, but the, but, but the, the left or the right child was null indicating that that's the location that the new node needs to be inserted. So we need to create the new node uh, in that case and return that new node that we created, like I, like I mentioned in the uh, function documentation, right? So that's the base case, right? So again, I think I'm gonna give you most of the uh, implementation for the task one here. Um, Maybe not all of it, but um, so so here, you know, base case is that uh, if the node is the null pointer, we need to create a new node and return it. Return the new node we create to be inserted into the tree, right? So that means that um, uh, 
the node is the null pointer, um, that's our base case. Um, so the way to, to create the, the new node, um, uh, you did to create this dynamically, right? Uh, so we want to, uh, similar to what we did for our linked list versions um, of stacks and queues and things, right? So, um, for example, if we look at the binary tree node, look at the constructors for it, the basic one you want to use, we, we have the key and the value. So we want to create a binary tree node where we tell it the initial key and value, and that will initialize the, the key value member um, uh, variables uh, to those that you pass in, right? So, um, So here, uh, we're, we're creating a binary tree node. So the full name of our binary tree node is binary tree node templatized on key value. And we, we're going to um, uh, create it dynamically. So we need to, re to have a pointer here, right? So something like that. Uh, and then, you know, I'm calling new to dynamically allocate the structure that we specify um, on the stack. And then we're invoking that using the constructor for the key value uh, pair. So the result should be that we get a new node that already has key and value initialized for us, right? Um, and that is of the, the type that we want to return. So we're just going to be returning that. So that's all we do in the base case. Um, the other thing, like I was mentioning, um, this is for me is the correct place to increment the side because we actually created the new node. Um, so so uh, we haven't quite inserted in the tree that it's going to get inserted uh, um, when we return back from this function. Uh, but um, but this would be a good place to increase the size. So, so again, um, we have a similar issue that um, um, like we had before, size is defined in the base class of these of these template uh, classes. So we have to give it like a full name or use the this pointer, right? Um, so I'll just copy that. We want to increment the size by one because we're creating and inserting the new node at this point, right? So I do that because now I should at least pass that one first test because after we do an insert, um, we, we are um, at least increasing the size even though we're not fully inserting the value yet in the tree. So. Um, so let's try it. So I'll make clean, make so everything's still building here. Um, oh, um, so it's, it's complaining here because uh, I return here, but it is possible that the if statement isn't true. So I do need to have a return statement outside of the if statement. Um, Although, again, at this point, I'll just uh, return null. Um, I mean, actually, uh, we're going to be returning the node that's passed in. Okay, so I go ahead and, and, and do that. So, um, So, you know, so, so, so the general idea is that when we create a new node, we should return that. 
otherwise, normally we should be just returning ourselves. Right? Or I should say we should be returning the node that we were called with. That, that's our current location in the tree that we're uh, trying to determine uh, whether we're at the, the point to uh, create and insert the new node or not. So that should make the compiler happy now because now there's no way that it can't hit a spot where we don't return something. So there it compiles and then we run our tests. We should find that um, you know um, the size is correctly set to one. So if we go back and look at our test here, um, it's actually passing these and it actually passes this one 57. Um, and it passes this one 58 because the is empty is implemented by checking the size in the base class, uh, but it's failing here because we don't actually have the value uh, inserted into the tree, right? Um, so, um, so the general case is, is that um, so we're, we're already past the, the point where we checked if it was null. So, so, so we're, if the node is not null, we're going to be performing the recursive search, okay? So if the key, we're, we're, we're maintaining the nodes in the tree by the orders of the key, okay? So we, we assume that the, whatever the type is of the key, um, it can be compared using less than or equal to, right? So if that comparison operator isn't defined for our type, then there are issues, but but it should be defined for all the types we'll use to test with, like strings uh, or ints, right? So our first test, we're just using integers for keys. So you can compare whether one key is less than or equal to another key. Okay. Um, so notice what you should be doing is um, the, 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 these nodes in the binary tree have some member functions. So you shouldn't be dir directly accessing like the key or the value let me, let me show you what I mean by that. Um, so if you look at the binary tree node class, uh, now our nodes um, are a little bit more complicated than what we've been using before. In particular, we, we declared that the key and the value are private. So you can't just directly access these member values. You have to access them uh, through uh, accessor methods, right? So in particular, if you want to compare whether the key is less than or equal to, in a node is less than or equal to some other key, you have to access this, uh, you have to access the, uh, the node's uh, get key member function, which will return the, uh, the, the key for you, right? So that's what we're saying here, right? So, so you've got to have an if statement that says if the key is less than or equal to node's key, then you want to uh, call insert recursively uh, um, on the left, right? Uh, on, on the left. So you need to call insert um, either on the left or the right subtree, right? And, and in both cases, you need to return uh, this node, all right? So, so um, what we're saying by that is something like, um, uh, we need to do our comparison. So, we need to search either left or right based on the key to find location to uh, insert uh, the new node, right? So if the key is less than or equal to uh, the nodes key, then we want to search left.
right? So this is how we maintain the tree as a binary search tree, okay? So, so all values, um, so the left of this current node have to have values that are less than or equal to uh, this node's key, right? So that means if, if we find a key that's less than or equal to, if we're trying to insert a key that's less than or equal to this node's key, it needs to go to the left um, subtree. And, and, and if the key is greater than this key, it needs to go right. And you know, um, by definition, we, we, we want to keep things less than or equal to on the left and things that are strictly greater than um, on the right for this map. So in this case, you know, again, this is a recursive function. So we're just calling ourselves recursively, um, but we need to go call it for either the left or the right. So, so the left or the right are binary tree node pointers. So so again, you can't directly access left and right. You have to call get left or get right. So, so, so get left, um, if you look at the binary tree node, um, uh, there's there's like a get left and there's like a set left and a has left and a get right set set right and has right. So um, so so right. So if you call get left, it will return the, uh, the the left node, which is the top of the subtree to the left of the current node. And if you call get right, it will return the right. Um, uh, node, which is the right subtree of this current. Okay. Uh, but, you know, we're just always passing the, the key and the value around until we find a place to create the new node and insert, like we already did. So that should probably run still, but again, we're not completely doing everything. So, so we're, we're going down left or right here, and we should ultimately terminate because at some point, either the left or the right is going to be null. So at that point, when we call, if, if the left subtree is null, when we call insert on it, uh, we'll, we'll come in one more time, but we'll find that it's null, and that's, that'll be the time when we create the new node here and return that new node, okay? So you should see that when we return that new node, we need to capture the new node that's returned here so that we can, in, we can set um, as appropriate our, our null left or our null right to that new node here, okay? But let's just make sure that compiles and runs still. Um, so I haven't really done anything yet. So, so we're still failing on the test um, uh, where we try and check that we've actually got the value 10 for our first insertion. All right. So, um, so I, I need to get the, the value that's returned here when we do this um, and, and save our new node, okay? So this even works though, if we call and the node isn't null, I mean, it still works fine because in that case, you know, we're gonna call it with our left and then we just, we're gonna return our, ourself when we do that. So we'll just be setting ourself back to ourself again, if that makes sense, right? So if we're calling it on the left uh, subtree, uh, uh, that recursive call will return itself uh, and then we'll just set ourselves back again. So that, that's return, all right? So what we need to do is, um, um, so we need to keep that value that's returned. And then uh, set the left uh, subtree to the returned node. 
case a new node was created. But if new node was not created, the same subtree is returned, so the assignment is still fine. That makes sense, all right? So, so all I'm saying is that, that now we need to use the set left. Um, Okay, right. so we're gonna we're gonna go to the left, possibly create a new node. Uh, whatever node um, should be the, the left subtree is gonna get returned, and then we, we we set that to be that subtree, right? So often it's just the same one, so we're kind of doing a little bit of unnecessary work. But at some point we get down to a null node where we create a new one, and when that gets returned, uh, we're gonna be setting um, what was our null pointer to that new node that was created. That that's how we're actually um, inserting values into the tree here. Um, I can remove a little bit of redundancy by declaring the return node outside of that, um, so I can just reuse it uh, in here. Uh, but I do need to kind of have the set uh, inside of here because it needs to set left if it was the left, if we went left, then we need to set right, we went right, so. There, so let's try that. Um, so now I was expecting it to pass um, um, our test there, so it's uh, still not passing. Um, um, we are compiling. Um, oh, there is one more thing. Yeah, so um, this should be described here as an easy thing to, to, to miss. Um, when the tree is initially empty, like it is here, uh, so, so let's walk through the steps. So when the tree is initially empty, um, the, the, the public insert um, that we call, let's just walk through it here. The public insert is going to call the private insert, but remember the, the root is going to be empty in that case. It's going to be null in that case, right? So we're going to immediately hit the um, the um, um, uh, the the, uh, the base case for the recursive private insert, create a new node, and that new node is going to be returned, right? So really, I mean, we do need to be doing something with the return value um, here as well. Um, uh, because of that one particular case, if, if the tree is empty, a new node is created and that needs to become the root of our tree. So, um, and, and we're handling increasing the size. I already did that. I mean, like I said, um, another place you could increase the size would be here, you know, uh, after you insert the new node. So. There we go. And uh, that's actually looks like a complete implementation of the um, uh, of the insert method. All right. OK, so yeah, I wanted to, to do that, get people started. So that was basically the, the other methods. Actually, uh, the, the find um, uh, is probably going to be is, is simpler. Um, find is simpler than insert. But we had to kind of do insert first in order to um, 
do some testing and things. So, um, oh, before I move on this from this, uh, let me kind of remind you. Um, so there are um, some uses of the insert in um, one of the constructors. So you know, uh, one, once you get all the task one things uncommented and 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 passing, you should uh, uncomment these for the task zero. And, and to do, get these to pass, um, I believe that you have to uncomment calls to insert in some of the constructors here. So, so like this constructor takes an array of keys and values um, and you'll want to reuse your own insert uh, when you're doing that. And that's probably the only one. So, so there's that. Uh, and then after that, I mean, find um, should be simpler, right? So, so but it, it's gonna have a public and a private method um, and the base case is, is that um, uh, if you come to a null pointer, that means that the search failed. Um, and in that case, you want to throw an exception, uh, the a key not found exception, right? So you shouldn't search for a key that's not in the tree. Or we want to tell um, the user if they try to search for something, they were expecting to be in the key, uh, that it wasn't there. So we throw an exception. Um, Um, uh, and there is, is kind of another, I don't know if you call this space case or general case, but um, um, if the, the null, if the node is not null, you should check the key. So in that case, if, if the key is the one you're searching for, um, um, uh, in this case, the, the, uh, the, the find just returns a value. So it should return the value part for the node where you, when you find the key. Right? Otherwise, you, uh, you, you have to do uh, the recursive part, right? So all these, the base case and these general cases happen in the recursive, in, in the private recursive version of find. So there, there needs, still needs to be a public find that just calls the, the private find on the root of the tree. Um, and then the, the private find does the actual recursion, the actual work. Right? So if you don't find the, the key with the current node, uh, you have to either search left, if the key is, is less than or equal, and search right if it's greater than. Um, and then all the way, I'll talk more in detail about these on Thursday for, for the task three, four, and five. But ultimately, then we're going to implement a function to be able to remove a value from the tree. And that, that's a little bit tricky, but we make it a lot easier by uh, implementing these private helper functions. Um, so a get minimum and a delete minimum. Um, and uh, the, these don't have public interfaces. So get minimum and delete minimum are just going to have private versions of these. They're going to be used by remove. All right. So get minimum um, shouldn't be too difficult. Once you implement fine, it's, it's similar. Uh, you need to recursively. Uh, so given a, a, a node, uh, you need to just keep going down to the left nodes of that subtree to get to the, the leftmost um, uh, value that doesn't have a left subtree. That will be the minimum value, um, or actually the minimum key. We're, we're looking for the minimum key here. Um, so yeah, you know, so, so if it doesn't have a left subtree, then you just return this node. Otherwise, the node has a left subtree um, so you, you, you just keep going down the left. So this get minimum is relatively simple. Uh, delete minimum is similar to get minimum. Um, so again, you just need to go down to get to a node that doesn't have a left subtree. Um, and once we find the node that has no left subtree, we want to return the right subtree, right? Uh, because we're going to be deleting this node. I'll talk more about this. So this would be a good one to draw out, right? So, so, so the, the delete minimum is a little bit more complicated than, than the get minimum. But it's doing a similar manipulation as we did for insert, kind of, uh, in order to redo the tree. 
And then finally, remove is going to use. It's going to it's going to first um, um, get the the minimum uh, node, uh, and that's going to delete it um, as part of implementing this. And I'll, I'll talk more in detail on this on Thursday. Um, all right, so that's kind of all I wanted to go over on this um, uh, video. Um, and uh, you know, if you have questions while you're working on your binary tree, you know, keep sending them to me. Um, and yeah, I'll talk to you guys later.